Hello all. Today we are going to talk about something very very important. We're going to talk about the Indian green building movement and you know you know Winston Churchill once said that we shape our buildings and thereafter the buildings shape us. And you know with making green buildings we have a great impact not only on us but on the environment. So it's not only that when we shape the buildings they shape us they also shape the environment. And you know today we have an organization called the Indian Green Building Council which does 93.8% of green rating in India and you know we are so privileged to have the chairman of IGBC talking to us today welcome sir thank you and a very happy good day to all of you uh, it's a great pleasure to join raj on this uh, interesting uh, conversation thank you thank you so sir's name is vasudevan suresh and you know to introduce him he was a he's a civil engineer from anna university college of engineering one of the first colleges in india you know with over 53 years of professional experience in housing infrastructure rural and urban development and built environment sectors he's the current chairman of indian green building council you know he started as you know an engineer in the tamil nadu public works department where he worked for 1.5 years and then he's led great work at the bureau of indian standards for more than 12 years and where he spearheaded the formulation of the La india's leading national standards including the national building code which is you know the which is like the bible of building in india you know he's also served at in hudko in various capacities for 23 and a half years and was the cmd till june 2002 during which you know uh hudko registered all round growth in housing infrastructure finance among other innovative initiatives sir has also represented india and worked closely with un hcs unido undp sarc adb jbic kfw U us aid adpc and various other you know in various facets of sustainable and safe human settlements for different global context initiatives sir has received more than 15 awards for his contribution to the nation to the world and to his profession so we are really very really glad and we really really welcome you sir very very glad to join you on this uh, day on it and thank you very much for the nice introduction also thank you thank you sir thank you so you know talking about the you know the indian green building scenario is there a rise you can give a brief overview is there a rise is there a fall is there a plateau that we have reached what is the situation currently sir not at all it has never been a never reached the plateau as a matter of fact is one area where a clear cut growth of roughly 15 to 20% annual growth is taking place in this particular sector the green building movement in this country started with the indian green building council in uh, 2000 and uh, from 2001 the rating started rolling out and we started with one building of 20000 square feet which is the called the green business center at uh, hyderabad uh, which is all, at the time is also the first platinum rated building uh, over there and i'm very happy today the same building has gone through a net zero energy building also that means is upgraded to that from that 20000 square feet uh, building there we are very happy that the indian green building council over the last uh, two decades has uh, registered uh yeah green footprint for all types of buildings of the order of 7.83 billion square feet that is of 783 crore square feet of green footprint covering all asset class of buildings maybe the only rating system where you got ratings available for each of the building typology and assets of building be it the commercial building or office building or it park or the hospital buildings or the school buildings or uh, for that matter the retail spaces and uh, residential building of all category i'll open out a little on that a little more later industrial building so depending upon each building 
the category categorization uh, undergoes change because the uh, amount of energy being consumed, water being consumed, waste being generated, and the amount of carbon footprint that can be uh, identified from that particular green initiative are all different from each other. Category. You can't have a vanilla rating and start putting the one rating for an office complex one for each one of the other buildings. No, we wouldn't do that. So we got all these things brought out. We have a 28 rating system and we are very happy that uh, the uh, achievement of uh, going from 20,000 square feet to a million to a billion and to now to about 7.83 billion is a, a steady growth by during which time also other rating agencies also started uh, one somewhere if you were start about 2001 other rating agencies came in about 2007 8 and uh, some recent one joined a year back etc that's good not a problem now what i'm trying to say is that to the direct question is showing a clear rise in trend because people are increasingly going for sustainable development climate change has brought in a new dimension of this particular one in a large way. Fortunately, the building regulatory framework, if I may use the word, is also gearing towards a particular question where I was associated with the uh, National Building Code work. I'll talk about that uh, later. And yeah. continue to be associated. Yeah. Continue to be associated even today, even though in the first, first version of the National Building Code of 1970 uh, version, I was the behind it fully included the first revision in 1983. But I'm now the vice chairman of the National Building Code of India. So I must have had about 56 years of thing for the 70 version, 83 version, as well as the uh, 2005 version, the latest 2016 version of the NBC. So that has also may give it an impetus, a large impetus on this uh, in a very large way. So the green building movement is clearly getting support and uh, acceptance, not only from the government sector, public sector, private sector, Real estate de developers, corporates, or for their organized offices and the uh, institution and uh, industrial undertakings, as well as for individual home loans, as well as all the housing agencies of various nature. And another reason why the thrust has come in a big way is because halfway down the bend in this 20 years journey, than just green building, a building to be green is good, that this one building has become green is fine. But for green building, we have shifted gears to go to green built environment, namely a series of building and infrastructure is a green built environment. That means you're covering not only at the level of a, a, a layout level, a, 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 a campus level, a neighborhood level, you're getting even to a city level. We even have the rating to come into the, uh, what do you call, uh, the areas of green cities. For example, large number of New smart cities are also rated as green cities. We are the first one in the world to get into green cities in large way. Also, the while the movement has got it, we got into also the connecting people from areas of work to areas of uh, living and all that. That is uh, mobility. So all we are the first one in the world to bring the metro rail rating for the green metro rating system. We got out also with the railway station rating, airports, all the major airports are under that. They are all the transport uh, infrastructure component. And I'm happy that. Just uh, two days back, we have uh, also uh, uh, cleared uh, the high-speed rail uh, rating, which is going to the first one between uh, Ahmedabad to Mumbai. So therefore, you understand why, why IGBC is able to do it, because we've got a very versatile and diverse background to deal with the green environment, and not just one building to just to be green as an island of excellence with drought all around. No, not like that. So we're covering the whole integrated approach to make the sustainability work in it. That's why I'm saying that the growth is coming continuously. And our own vision is to achieve 10 billion square feet by 2022. India at 75 years of independence and about 1,000 crore of green footprint is what we are all working towards. So the answer is clear growth, clear growth. Maybe what I can say if we have achieved maybe around 5 to 6% of all our buildings being green today, my own vision is that we should be able to get into somewhere around uh, 10 to 15% in the next about uh, four or five years' time. And by the year 2030, which is also sustainable development goal to year 2030, we would possibly achieve around 30 to 35% of our buildings under the green footprint. 
absolutely absolutely you know for all the viewers a great answer sir thank you so much for all the viewers sir is right now in a green building he's right now in the swan song house which was one of the last houses that lori baker made and you know if this building you know would have gotten the rating it would have gotten way above platinum and uh, so you know my next question is regarding sir we already have a lot of traditional knowledge and you know you have made Uh, excellent comprehensive document you know as the national building code and also we had this document yeah. called the sp41 so sir i'm a big yeah, fan of sp41 document. i remember yeah. remember during my time yeah yes yeah. yes i'm a big fan of sp41 do we actually need a separate package green rating system because i think national building code and sp41 actually if any person follows by the word will actually cover most of the things that green rating systems you know talk about yes. what do you think sir yeah a uh, very simple uh, raj the issue is uh, the uh, possibly uh, before i get into that uh, the uh, uh, as you're all aware it was exactly in september 15th of uh, 2015 that all the 193 countries are joined together and launched the famous uh, sustainable development uh, uh, goal movement sdg 2030 was decided in september 2015 and i'm very uh, happy our own honorable prime minister was there in the general assembly to get that uh, at that when it was passed over there and can you believe in less than a year time when the 2016 version of nbc came we we were the first one in the world to bring a chapter on approach to sustainability right. that was not the first version in the latest version of 2016 but even the latest version is about 5 years old 2000 we are 2021 now right. the approach to sustainability document came in part 11 of the national building code of india and right. that really gives a right framework see codes and standards have different objectives over there they are intended to get 80% of the buildings to follow a good base and a, a baseline to be done while green building rating not just go go above now to assess a building to be green or not requirements are identified in the code on integrated water management integrated energy management integrated waste management carbon footprint reduction enhancing the uh, 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 what do you call uh, the green uh, uh, element of the particular one using all the resources in optimal way using embodied energies of building to the least all these are all identified including the life cycle costing or the capital cost and operating cost those are all covered in the national building code but to operationalize that particular one in terms of quantified quantified approach when you apply to a particular building over there that is where the ratings come in a big way and not only that ratings are upgraded at a regular intervals over there for example if you had a pilot version of the housing one somewhere in 2008 and you'll be very happy to know then we get a version 1.0 2.0 now the 3.0 version is going on the residences which is a major success i'll talk about residences a little later so rating system also push the baselines and codes much more and makes it much more stringent you're doing evaluation A, a critical evaluation how well they have done all those principles which are laid down in the in the national building code it is not only the national building code uh, part 11 that matters there even the ecbc uh, energy conservation building code brought out by the bureau of energy efficiency is an important document on on only on energy efficiency aspect and equally important are the standards for the uniform plumbing code uh, equally important are the issues uh, coming from the ministry of environment forest and climate i am a member of the government of india committee for uh, environmental impact assessment expert approval committee for ea clearance for large project and i can tell you every month the number of projects that come for ea clearance all these aspects are covered so you have the national building code you have the uh, ecbc available the plumbing code issue the ministry of environment forest regulation for the ea clearance etc so these are all these are all codes and standards and regulations which are there we are not talking of regulations for compliance we are talking in terms of independent assessment whether that building or that development has covered that so that's where the rating system comes because the court cannot give a rating for a building on that you know you can only give what are all the performance requirements for each of them for achieving energy efficiency or water efficiency and various other parameters you can also indicate what are the ranges or u values for the uh, thermal conductivity of the wall or uh, the heat uh, gain aspects or for the roof the r values etc but what should be there for a platinum rating of a building or a gold rating of a building or a silver rating of a building or just certified building or internal things of a question but you are you are in a college campus now at this point of time so each question paper a 100 marks question so we evaluate for each of these issues everybody cannot achieve the maximum on that 
somebody would have got 80 and above, somebody would have got 70 and 80, 60 to 70, and up to 60. So these are where the ratings also come over. So that's where the rating is like uh, an evaluation of based on what at design level and construction level you have put into the particular building over there. But the basic regulatory framework, regulatory framework, mind you, that the rating framework is different, certification framework is different than a regulatory framework. There's a clear cut difference, but we derive inspiration from all that, including not only the agents, which I said, including the work done by Ishre for the air conditioning and HVAC. You'll see healthcare buildings, how we have worked very closely in the post COVID situation. I remember, remind me to ask the students and all that. So Absolutely. I find it very clear the thing, but we derive substantial amount of inspiration from these regulatory framework. And I have to really place on record my appreciation. Don't, for, don't forget, even the ECBC, which came in 2007 there, by 2017, we got the latest version coming. And then that's not enough. They also got into housing now through Eco Niva Samida. Uh, when you talk about residential, we'll be able to talk about that in detail. All of them are also undergoing periodic upgradation, keeping into the new climate change agenda. We are touching, and, uh, and that is going to be a big, big driver. Uh, 2030 and 2050, nine years from now, and uh, another about uh, 29 years from now, are going to be major areas where all your practicing architects and engineers and environmentalists and MEP of people have to work towards achieving that particular goals which are there, SDG 2030, as well as climate change, the net zero, decarbonization by 2050. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, uh, so, you know, I want to now, now ask you about your organization, IGBC. Initially, we had USGBC lead and, you know, IGBC collaboration, but later IGBC was a separate organization and you entered business on your own. What was the reason behind that, sir? So that, uh, so that you bring sufficient clarity right from the beginning. They're all different organizations. United States has got the Green Building Council. In fact, as a matter of fact, the world rating system did not start in the USGBC. It started with Briam from the UK, and they were the first rating. And based on that model, only even US started its uh, rating schemes under the US uh, GBC rating much later, somewhere in the mid 90s. Over there, it came over there. When so India started this particular, of course, they had a very good amount of inspiration coming from the US Green Building Council and other rating agencies as well for our initial first first cut draft on our rating system that is to be adopted. They're different organizations. We are a part of the uh, Confederation of Indian Industries. The uh, Indian Green Building Council, the entire Indian organization under the CII umbrella, 125-year-old organization is uh, uh, the uh, uh, CII, and we are a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old organization now. Whereas USGBC has got a separate entity as a, a, a great value of telling the whole world what green building should be. So their rating systems are there. We have we must have got initial inspiration. We have not we must have we got initial inspiration or rating system from the USGBC rating. Primarily, it was come two or three rating was I still remember since I'm there right from the beginning of uh, IGBC's formation. The initially two ratings for the commercial uh, torrential rating and all the IT parts and offices, commercial building were the first one to be covered. Then, of course, later we brought in residents earlier. But what has happened is we found out that uh, somewhere about three to four years of our uh, large uh, uh, travel, that most of those ratings do not take into account India's requirement, India's temperature, India's humidity. We have six geoclimatological zones, the hot arid region, the hot humid region, the cold region, the temperate region, you know it. Uh, India, you talk of JNK need and HP is different from a Rajasthan hot arid region uh, needs or the coastal areas uh, which is hot, humid, etc. And therefore, we had to have indigenized the rating system to deal with Indian requirement because you're going to apply for projects in India. You can't base it on a rating based on situations over there. For example, if you would have done that through uh, uh, USGBC's lead rating or something of that nature for any Indian context, sir, if it's Bangalore, I got to find out which can be the surrogate city I can take for the, is it Boston to be done or some other city to be done? Instead of doing that, we indigenize with respect to India's requirement in terms of all the rainfall, temperature, uh, humidity, other requirements, uh, we indigenize. So Indian Green Building Council's rating system, each one of the rating system, and we are very happy while others might have about six to seven or eight rating system, we are 
28th rating system and the latest one is 29th for the high speed rail. So we have this rating system which is evolved through a participative methodology wherein all the concerned stakeholders are involved in that and which are reviewed at regular intervals. I told you versions keep on upgrading for Indian situations in a, in a very large way. I'll tell which are all the areas we have first. I'll talk a little later, but that's not the question that you're asking. You're asking with respect to US GBC. And therefore, we're very happy that uh, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have done that particular thing on our own requirement, keeping in you our name. That's why uh, you would see that while all the rating system, irrespective of whether it is the US rating system or the British rating system or the Canadian rating system or Australian rating system, all of them are on basic seven principles of using using those particular It's a matter of how much marks you give for each of those particular aspects. You know, 100, 100 mark question paper depends upon each question are they getting for water about 20%, energy about 25%. Waste management about 15%, using building material another one. So all those things are a little amount of tweaking in this Biska Faraka between each of those rating system, between how much you uh, value on that. And uh, uh, I'm very happy that uh, our own, while we had initially the inspiration from the USGBC and the BRIAM rating system, we are also part of, we, are the, we, are, we represent India. IGBC represents India in the World Green Building Council. There are 70 countries in the world out of 193 countries, which has got their own country green building councils. We are a member of the World Green Building Council there. And we know each one of the things, what ratings are available. For example, uh, when we got the housing coming, many did not have that particular one, uh, homes, which is a very major portfolio us. For example, we are the first one to come into the uh, uh, IGBC Metro, uh, based on his Singapore, Hong Kong, well, and five years later, USGBC has got the uh, metro uh, stations coming. Cities, green cities rating, we are the first one to come in. Australia has recently adopted what we did about six years back after the, under, yesterday was the uh, sixth uh, anniversary of uh, all the urban transformation agenda, 100 smart cities and 500 uh, Amru cities, etc. So we got the rating at that time. So now, uh, the green cities rating is also now taken by others. We are the first one to get into the hospital rating related one. So what I'm trying to say is, so we have tried to do that, particular, including logistics parks and warehouses, which is an important component. Done. So now based on that, many international rating agencies or many country rating agencies are also taking, we either take inspiration for adoption or adaption or using some of those features also in a large way. So it is not that we, were, we are part of that, and uh, we're very happy to have collaboration. We learn a lot. Best practices are coming in a very large way. Uh, and uh, you, you will see very shortly, we have gone beyond the green building to the net zero movement also, wherein some of these issues are being done by international level and national level. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, uh, you mentioned about that you are a 21 year old organization and, you know, you indigenous, and I, you know, you made the code Indian, you made green building codes Indian. Now, but you know, there are, you're not the only one in India. When I say that, you know, in a recent editorial in the Hindustan Times, the minister yeah. Hardeep Singh Puri, the urban affairs minister said that, yeah. you know, he, he was calling Griha as India's own rating system. He went short of saying that Griha is India's national rating system. Don't you think there that, is a, let me, let me clarify straight away right. before you proceed further on that. There is no, there is no formal official. Uh, national rating system done at all, as per my information, because the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, as well as Renewable Energy, uh, these are the concerned ministries dealing and Ministry of Power, all of them recognize all the rating system on an equal footing. For example, be it the IGBC rating system or the USGBC rating system or the or the uh, Graha, Graha rating system. There is nothing like a national rating system available. Uh, possibly some of those government buildings were covered uh, in the initial phase through the Graha rating, but now they're all being covered equally. So therefore, uh, that information that you felt over there, it's a matter of interpretation one. Even since you're referring to uh, an article by the Honorable Minister, if you would have seen that the very first line he talked is about, is about IGBC, possibly the way it's put over there and the thing is put up as a green building, International Green Building Organization. What it really means is IGBC, uh, which did, for, is, is, that's in his capacity, not as urban affairs minister, but as civil aviation minister. But that, but that brings a very important question, sir. 
you know at yeah. this point don't you think you know you just said there is no formalized indian national rating system don't you think india needs a government regulated government controlled government formulated india national rating system for this country uh, i would not agree with that okay. these are areas in which you have to evaluate the performance of the building for example why do you have each one of the states having their own board why do you have also cbse also coming why do you have icsc coming over there so these are all rating system which are, for example rating word is used over there when you want to talk of a commercial rating of the building you have a crisel rating your icra rating your care rating standard and poor rating and fitch rating why are they are different rating it's all trying to evaluate the performance of building to have an independent third party assurance that this particular building is being evaluated by assessors who get into it in very minute details at the end of the day proof of the pudding is who which has got the largest amount of credibility of the particular thing obviously that's where the rating system also attract the clients to come forward the answer is no we should not have that but the answer is lying in what are the principles that should be enunciated in that so this that is exactly what has happened in the national building code part 11 that's exactly what has happened the ecbc done by the ministry of uh, power has already done that it's as exactly what has been done by the ministry of environment forest in their own regulatory framework etc so based on those basic principles which are there each rating agencies which are to be done uh, which are run uh, very transparently whose work and outputs are already known for the whole country and therefore they are able to independently do that evaluation uh, accordingly based on that absolutely sir but you know if you look at today you know griha you look at igbc you look at any other building code you know green building rating system building rating building rating sir sorry building. sorry so green sorry building rating green building rating system you know buildings developers owners get benefits like far extra ground coverage based yes. on so you know yes. public benefit is being given on the basis yeah. of private ratings so don't you think you know like this this is that india needs a regulation for the green building rating system and you know if regulations were to come which ministry you know will be responsible will it be the ministry of environment many will... many, many many i many. tell you why i tell right. you why for example i was part of the another great initiative somewhere in the early uh, end of the 20th century mon where right. the construction industry development called cidc got started i am sure you are aware of cidc so they are wanted to know which is the best uh, ministry to deal with construction so some some people say ministry of uh, earlier it was called works and housing then it's called the urban development now means of housing and urban affairs but railway said we are doing as much amount of construction defense said we are doing as much amount of uh, construction the ministry of education said we are doing all the school building health ministry said we are doing all the hospital building etc so therefore the claim for construction as an entity is cross cutting therefore the then planning commission earlier and now of course is the niti ayog dealt with the particular cidc under that umbrella so therefore what i would suggest is that the construction industry on housing building and infrastructure cross cuts all these particular ministries over there but the closest as you would say is housing and urban affairs because they deal not only buildings of all category plus all the infrastructure because of the urban transformation agenda for city infrastructure development is coming but energy and energy saving environmental issue or other ministries there it's a cross cutting theme over there so what is required is it will continue to be there like that for example the ecbc brought out by the ministry of power uh, at regular interval is done by the uh, uh bureau of energy efficiency you know bureau there's a separate independent organization to deal with that particular thing and that document is what is being inspiring as far as only only on the energy conservation related one similarly the cpcb the uh, central pollution control board brings in all the emission related component in terms of ga- gaseous uh, emissions or in terms of solid uh, emissions in the solid waste or liquid emission in terms of sea waste solid and other toxic waste etc they are the one who bring those particular uh, regulation so i would uh, therefore reasonably uh, feel that an independent assessment always has the best particular value which will stand the test of time transparency and these ratings by the way are not standalone you give a rating somewhere in 2010 uh, it becomes rated all now it is continuously being performance watch is the building performing the way that is the uh, rated they said you save around uh, 30% uh, water 
40 percent energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But is it really doing that? So that's continuously being watched. So rating also has got a time period of three years. Some do have a five years time period after which recertification also has got to be done based on performance watch of those rating system. That can only be handled by independent organization and not by a government department. Absolutely, absolutely. But the first part of my question was about, you know, public benefits like extra FI, FAR. Yeah, I'll and, come on that. Yeah. I, I'll come on that. Sorry, I didn't touch on that. So therefore, when the green building movement started in a very large way, uh, there was a, there was a, uh, it was a little difficult to catch. So if you take the scale on a 20 year scale, if you achieve, let's say, of the order of a billion square feet in the first 10 years time period, but from a billion to around nearly 8 billion uh, has achieved in the next 10 years time period over this, like a, a, a good cricket match that you have of the catching up. So therefore, in terms of, first of all, there was no awareness and then appreciation and then application comes over there. So it is a starting point at that point of time. So therefore, with a view to uh, provide, uh, encourage to uh, the green build movement in a large way, I told you in the beginning, if you are about 5 to 6% of all the buildings going green at this point of time, it will reach around 30 to 35 by 2030, another nine more years time, because increasing awareness has come on the particular thing over there. So with this particular thing in view, in the last around 10 years time, IGBC uh, initiated this particular dialogue with all the state governments. So all the state governments started recognizing the rating system. If you go and see all the state governments, have, it's also an answer to your other question, which we were, you told earlier about the national rating agency and all that. So each one of the states have recognized the rating system available by IGBC, Terry Graha, as well as the USGBC uh, lead rating, et cetera, et cetera. And there, it has become part of the green building regulation as part of the building regulation. Building regulation, building bylaws of the local body, new chapters are added to deal with water energy management, etc. And therefore, as part of the regulatory environment, which is like a stick over there, they also thought of giving some carrots there to give some incentives so that you can encourage more and more people to go the green way. And it's also good for the state. State, if you really look at from the state's point of view, if these projects are going to save around uh, 25 to 35 percent of water and around 35 to 40 45 percent on the energy side waste management coming to uh, net uh, zero aspects coming and it's good for the city good for the water authorities energy authority so they feel they all all the field will that they should give incentives coming on that incentives can be an additional far or fsi uh five percent it's a benefit to be given to builders for, absolutely in any case absolutely so you know, are for our speedy processing to be done property tax to be brought down. Some states even brought down during the, not in the capital cost, but in the operating cost of the building on that. So incentives can be of various uh, areas. Every new initiative has incentive for renewable energy. Why do renewable energy want an incentive? Because it was not catching up earlier. So solar power, solar water heater, all of them, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy gave that particular one, which every state has also adopted in their own way. Absolutely. You don't so have to look at it as, because, yeah. because the development is coming not from private sector alone. I, I clarified that you right in the beginning. Yes. The green building is taken by central PWD, railways, defense, is also taken by the state PWDs. It's also done by all the regular developers uh, coming under CRENAI or NARIPCO or other agencies. It's also going to the corporate entities which are uh, there, public sector or private sector undertaking. It's also going for the housing agencies, all the housing boards, right. not private, housing right, right. boards, some clearance board development authority, affordable housing, are all done by housing agencies and even individual housing. So the benefit of that goes to everybody who deals with the building development. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. But so, you know, uh, there's a question about integrity and transparency of the rating systems. So as people yes, derive these is. benefits like FAR and ground coverage from green buildings, yeah. uh, you know, from the rating system and the ratings that IGBC yes. gives, in some states, for example, how does IGBC maintain this transparency and integrity in the rating system, in the rating process? Because, so, because the whole rating system anywhere in the world is always done by, in addition to the core team of the uh, uh, IGBC team around 200 in number, we also got independent groups, which does the particular you know, assessment in addition to uh, this a core group of people are available outside the particular one so so that you will be able to have transparency being brought into the particular area any particular project whether based on our internal assessment it also goes to that particular team to in terms of uh, uh, additional uh, checks and balances 
to do this particular area and then based on it's only a rating and the rating is given at two levels at the uh, design stage level is called uh, uh, pre certification and then after the building is completed in all respect is what the real certification comes whether what you said you'll do at the beginning when you submitted your building plans and proposal have you really done it two years down the line and the building got really completed the service all got executed is the energy saved or water saved or waste management is done or you got in all those elements or not done etc and as far as the local bodies are concerned they have got it very clear if certain amount of incentives of uh, 5 to 15 percent depending upon each state some people have done up to 5 to 7 percent some have done 5 10 and 15 uh, like rajasthan punjab has done 10 up has done 10 etc etc and in case the builders don't do that, they have not done that, they, they got the additional benefit and have not implemented that, immediately come with a very heavy punitive, uh, uh, what do you call, strike will come of not, not for the additional FAR, they will have to pay a very, very, very compensation of penalty for claiming the additional FAR benefit, but not done the green building movement. So there are enough checks and balances to deal with those particular incentives are always the right thing to have any new green path. For example, if, if green building was the one for 2000 to 2020, you'll see that a new thrust will come on the net zero initiatives coming from now till about 2050. So that's again a new initiative that will come over there. You've got to really give support. Every initiative in the country of this nature, anything new coming, so people adopt the particular thing till it becomes a standard practice there, then you don't require that particular uh, incentive at that point of time. These are all uh, early uh, bird initial initiatives to give a big push for the yes. building movement. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it definitely pushes people to follow these rating systems. Yes, absolutely. But you know, there is, yeah, there is, there is a one question regarding, you know, the autonomy or the credibility of rating systems, you know, if you like, yeah. I want to I ask regarding like uh, IGBC is owned and backed by Confederation of Indian Industries and yeah. IGBC is 21 years old. And there's also a latest, you know, like a one year or two year old rating system called GEM, which is also backed by ASOCAM. I must mention here yeah. because, you yeah. know, like these trade bodies, you know, are coming up with their own codes. How are we on the right track when the codes are run by trade bodies themselves to rate their own buildings. First what do you think all, about it? First of all, first of all, don't use the one word three times. Trade, trade, trade. Use the thrice over there. Commerce, okay. industry is a major one. They are the biggest economic drivers of the country. Right. And industrial and uh, bodies of this nature, be it the be it the CII or ASOCHAM or FIKI or uh, Indian Merchant Chambers, other industry they have play a very very major role in the national development agenda of the country over there so they take large number of initiatives of not only here they also deal with the factory buildings to the the green green core rating for green the factory buildings to be also through processes bring in energy efficiency on cement industry uh, other industry etc etc is done so therefore they are independent bodies they are extremely independent body where people of stature are brought in over there. There are good processes in place over there to evaluate that particular process. There are checks and balances within the particular organization. There is absolutely no problem to deal with that, whether who should be giving a lead on that. Just because it's initiated by a body of that nature, like, like you, yeah. but you can ask this question, if it is done by a credai, which are builder's body, if it is done by narrowed to another builder's body, which represents only builder's interest, then that rating will have a certain amount of coloring of it, but not a larger amount of the overall economic, national economic development agenda. CIA as a body with 125 years of its experience plays a very, very major role in the national development agenda. And therefore, the credibility of organization where anything that matters in the development agenda, as a result of the building development agenda, built and city development agenda, transportation sector agenda, all these are agendas in which the industry plays a very, very major role in that uh, sector. And therefore, institutions which are uh, centers of excellence, this is all set, there are about, there are about uh, six centers of excellence under the CII to deal on these particular things on water agenda, energy saving, uh, agenda, etc., etc. So there is no problem on that. As I said, the credibility goes at the end of the day, or proof of the pudding is in the eating. That's the best way to put it across. And it would not grow, it wouldn't be accepted had it not been having the right credibility with people of eminence holding the particular one. If you see the people who are holding uh, those organizations and the type of people backing up those particular uh, um, at the uh, back end, 
front end and back end are phenomenally large competent people with high specialization, be it on PhD or master in uh, architecture, engineering, MEPA, environmental sciences, natural sciences, all these people are behind it. Today, I'm very happy to share with you that as part of the IGBC one, besides what we have in the IGBC team itself, we have over 27 chapters in different parts of the country headed by the best people in that particular state. And they are not part of the CIA team over there. They're the Green Building Movement team over there. We have about 35,000 uh, professionals who are part of the green building uh, consultants or in the architectural and engineering team, MEPF team, etc., who are all contributing to that particular thing. So it is the work of all these people, including the consultants and the green building consultants, which are continuously evaluated and rated so that people know that those consultants do a right job on that. So those are the internal systems to ensure that the processes and systems go and it's all transparent, it's all put on the website. It's all not done, a document being prepared overnight. Any change that's happening is also identified so it can be participative. The participative process, the consensus-based approach for India's best particular development needs. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. You know, coming back to the rating scenario in India, CPWD has developed their in-house green rating system. NBC 2016, as you said, has, you know, made it more widespread by having a chapter on sustainability. The basic I principles. I told you, part 11, I told you. Absolutely. Part 11 yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The basic principles yeah. of green building are now becoming widespread. Does that mean that there's a loss of business for green rating systems? Or that means that the initial aim of, you know, widespread, uh, you know, following of green uh, building techniques is now being fulfilled. What do you think, sir? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I welcome it. I welcome the initiative and CPWD he is one of the major organizations in the country. If I talk with a sense of pride, I talk of uh, 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 CIA being 125 years old. Today, CPWD is a 164 year old organization. Central right. PWD of the country is the biggest uh, builder which has built uh, India in a very large way. So for to their own architects, to their own planners, their own engineers, civil, mechanical, electrical, all the people who do with the project formulation and project design, each one of them which are dealt with by a, a CPWD team there. So these are a nice guiding document. So what exactly are they looking for? You know, one is to understand when CPWD prepares a proposal for a parliament house or a central vista building or an external office building or a, a Pariyavaran Bhavan where uh, we all meet every time. So they have to give guidance to their team over there. These are the features from architectural point, planning point, engineering point. You have to keep in mind your design so that when you submit a proposal, you will be able, they will be able to ensure that all those requirements in the rating system are taken into account. So those are, ex they're excellent. They're not a rating system. They are guiding document of department. Like for some other state like Maharashtra, PWD, and some other PWD also has got some guiding document for them to equip their own team to prepare that. But let me tell you, all those buildings finally come up to rating agencies for coming the rating on that. Even though CPD does, for example, uh, many buildings which are there, for example, the UNC external affairs building, Pariyavaran Bhavan building, et cetera, et cetera, are all rated by various agencies. Many government buildings and central and state are also being done. For example, the whole of Rajasthan, uh, if you go to the secretariat building, IGBC has rated the whole particular building, including the retrofitting and all that. But CP, the PWD has prepared the document for the IGBC rating. Recently, two of the states, which you got Telangana states coming, their own new secretariat complex is going to be an IGBC rated particular thing. That means their guiding document will be done by their, their, their planners, their architects, their civil engineers, their structural engineers, their MEP engineers, etc. But then they will submit the document for rating from this one. Like, like the airport projects I told a little earlier, I, by the way, Airports Authority of India or GVK or GMR or whomsoever has taken the initiative for the new uh, airport uh, projects. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. So, so you know, with, with respect to the entry of... Uh... Yeah, no, no loss. To your direct question, it is not a loss and gain. I okay. would say it is, it is win-win for all. Win -win you know why? All. Because the basic document that comes out from these departments, or the builders for that matter, or a, a real estate developer, they go through the grill. That means it's a participative process wherein the concerned architect who knows about passive design in the large way, he will take out of the envelope design, orientation of the building, the civil engineer would have done the right technology for the walling and roofing system, the air conditioning engineer would have done the right level of thing uh, from earlier, if it was around 
150 square feet per ton of air conditioning. Today, it has gone to 750, uh, uh, what do you call, square feet per ton of air conditioning. The latest building is 1,000 uh, square feet per ton of air conditioning. That means technology is also undergoing phenomenal changes. So the basic document prepared by the Project Formulation Authority, Project Design Authority, take into account these features. So I would therefore say, wait a minute, to that extent, the rating agency will find it increasingly uh, easier to see that the requirements are put, but that brings in new challenge. So I mean, everybody does that basic one. I told you about the pass mark. So that's where each one goes and therefore additional one. So you get, if it was previously a certified building, a silver building, gold building, many of them will go towards the gold. It's like, for example, when I graduated, uh, uh, maybe around 56 years back, I'm sure getting 60 or 65 percent marks or 70 was very good. But by the time, uh, of course, you are now doing PhD. Now, by the time others went, uh, 70 marks or 80 marks was good enough. But now we are all talking into nothing more than 85 or 90 marks, isn't it? It's exactly like that. You are uh, uh, the uh, uh, raising the bar in continuous intervals in terms of rating agents that also brings in efficiency of a large nature. Absolutely, absolutely. So can I ask you a bonus question? You know, this is something related to my research. You know, so so the question is, sir, uh, that, you know, green rating and this green building movement has kind of led to, you know, it's based on energy efficiency. It's based on reducing the energy load of the building. That was the initial thrust. And, you know, now also it's no, a major, major no, chunk. No, don't go on that premise. Don't go on the premise so that I stop you right in the beginning so that don't develop on that. A green building rating is a multidisciplinary approach. You're not doing energy efficiency rating. That ECBC does that. Where the only concern is energy, 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 and energy. So right. that aspect is brought in the energy conservation rating on that. Whereas the green building rating covers, as it's about seven major phases coming in that, in which integrated water management, water saving becomes an important component. Very important thing of rainwater harvesting, aquifer recharging, wastewater recycling, use of low flow fixtures, how you can conserve water in large way, use of the recycled water for various other uses, et cetera, et cetera, becomes a very, waste management becomes an important one. Building material to be used of a very large nature, including the issues on embodied energy for building materials, high energy uh, value building. So green building rating covers all these aspects put together in which, since you raised the question on that, I want to give an answer, direct answer. The energy, energy efficiency of the building will also have marks in a hundred marks scale. It will change from as low as around 20 marks in hundred to as high as 70 marks a hundred. Why do you do that? If you take in residential building, that particular value will be around 20 because they are not air conditioned buildings over there. I'm sure on housing, I want to touch and open out a little more. Whereas when you come into the business buildings, office buildings, complexes there, uh, especially IT parks, where 24 by 7 using uh, air conditioned environment, etc., etc., or a retail mall, etc., office, etc., it goes up around 30, 30, 32. Then it goes up to the data center. Data right. centers are very important building energy guzzlers where the energy efficiency component is very high. As high as about 70, 70 marks we put on energy efficiency there. So therefore, there is the balance level for the other uh, marks in the various one. So therefore, a green building component uh, is not energy efficiency alone. It, energy efficiency also is one of the elements in the green building. Now you continue the question. I yes, so because but, I no, no. Proceed with the energy. Green <laughs> yeah. building is energy efficient. It is energy efficient. Right. It is not energy efficient alone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. So, sir, you know, the energy efficient building, I'm not saying a green building, I'm saying an energy efficient building has one criticism that the energy yeah. efficient building leads to, you know, recirculation of the same way to reduce the AC load. And that leads to, you know, a lot of problems with the indoor air quality. And that has been the criticism since the beginning of energy efficient, efficient buildings that have come on on in in this world so so what do you think I'm, about this kind of you I'm know i'm glad i am glad you i am glad you raised that but i won't agree with that particular premise conclusion that you got energy efficient buildings bring poor quality internal environment i will not agree on that that's because the other aspect the other aspect of that particular product that goes in be it hvac heating ventilation or the uh, mechanical ventilation issue or natural ventilation issue are are left out. If you do only one aspect to achieve that 30% energy saving or 20% energy saving, you're you're like one of those things with a blind yeah, yeah. thing going only <laughs> with that one aim or that. No, right. that's not the thing. You have to equally achieve that. That is why you'd be very, uh, very interested to know that when the COVID stuck over there, 
the one of the first thing that came over by the indian medical council you must have heard of that yes He's, yes and we have here in march in april indian medical council came up with the statement very important uh, guideline document a directive document that all air conditioned buildings yes. are unsafe they are the one spreading infection in a very large way and therefore uh, what has happened was igbc immediately swung into operate 2020 uh april may we are now in 2021 and may uh, june now right and then along with ishre ishre is the national professional body dealing with uh, uh, all aspects of the uh, ventilation comfort ventilation included over there they brought in a interesting document and that we brought out i'm very happy and proud in may 2020 itself igbc brought out the document with inputs coming from ishre wherein what request we done for such type of environment so that you get the right level of air changes per hour recirculation ever is taking place rightly use the right level of filters for so that the inflow air that comes in over there is also safe to come over there including the exhaust air coming etc and let me tell you uh, raj i'd like to be very happy and proud that document has been so much welcome by the whole building industry including all the departments it has helped uh, very much to remove the misconceptions in a large way but in a way also clears the wrong implementation in practical situation where they are not they are recirculated with bad air inside they are not being fresh air the number of air changes required for example uh, uh, an operation theater an icu and all the other related area including office spaces library another one where you require more number of air changes very clearly identified as low as around 4 to 5 air changes power to as about 36 air changes per hour so that's the type of requirement there how do you ensure that you achieve that particular thing and what type of things you require for humidity control temperature control and the type of inflow air all been brought out at this document has been very well received and as i told you a little earlier that we were the only one till day in the world to have got a separate rating for healthcare hospital buildings over there and igbc's rating for hospital building is very highly received in a very large way and therefore even that particular rating which is about 6 uh, years old now which went through 1.0 version last year after the covid situation to take care of this infection spread issue also into a large way to introduce that uh, uh, that in the uh, whole ratings we even got a document uh, which is a, a fast track emergency hospital facility because you don't have the facility there which is getting created every day as a matter of fact uh, each state is doing the additional facilities of that what type of precautions to be done in the design of all those hospital uh, not only for the normal care but also for the uh, epidemic care in a large way and clearly bring design element that every building should have a clear cut thing for the infectious disease than the normal one with separate access and other related problem so the issue on air quality is because of energy efficiency sorry you are come to a wrong conclusion on that energy efficiency achievement has got an independent thing how do you save energy saving energy doesn't mean put bad quality of air into the particular thing that means you have misapplication of the idea those builders or developers or the uh, uh, consultants dealing with that uh, i'm sure they must have given the suggestion but they might not have put the latter component of the thing of changing the filter at regular intervals those are all details available uh, in the code there so that's the situation to so to clarify abundantly clarify energy and energy efficiency so the, is also the two so component passive and active design premises maybe pre pre premise maybe a little incorrect but the current situation of implementation in india you recognize that there has to be something to do with you know change you know having proper education to all the builders who kind of design these hvac systems do you agree with that sir at least of course yeah of course okay okay, okay. thank you thank you thank you sir of you course. know but but then but, but then that is why you you hit the nail on the head i'm happy you made a raise that that is why igbc has got into a memorandum of understanding with the kradai confederation of real estate developers association of india right. and the other body dealing real is called the narco national real estate development council we are mou also with them so that we are reaching out to all the builders and developers so that all the builders and developers who deal with the all asset class of building residential building commercial building hotel building hospital building retail building etc they incorporate that into it a continuous green education campaign is being done through regular training programs with to each one of the constituencies we have about 27 chapters each one of these uh, uh, bodies also has got chapters all over the uh, country do that and uh, i as i told you residential building is one of our very very major one uh, i'm sure unless you're going to ask anything on residents later uh, 
are you going to ask anything on the residential issues? No, are you? No. Yeah. I would like to indicate that we are the first one to get the residential in 2008. And we got IGBC Green Home Rating, which came very, very popular in the residential building done by builders and developers. Even though in the initial about uh, 12 years time period, predominantly they covered the middle income and high income housing and not the other. Ever since the government, present government brought in the housing for all agenda from 2015 with the uh, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana to cover weaker section of low income housing, he brought in another rating system called the IGBC affordable home rating. So that means those are for the weaker session, low income, the lower middle income rating. It's not that uh, the green building rating is only for the rich and the poor, rich and the mighty, and not for the poor and the low income. So equally applicable on that. So we got the rating system for the IGBC uh, affordable green home. And in addition to that, those are all for new building coming. What will happen to all the society? Look at all the Rohini's and Varkas and Patpat Gant and uh, the cooperative schemes in uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, other parts of the world. So we brought in a new rating system for residential green societies. What do you do for existing buildings which are already operating? They also want to go green. How do you do that? So they brought in this new rating system called IGBC uh, Green Residential Society. How do you retrofit? If energy efficiency was not there, how can you build? Building may not change. You can't do much in passive design, but you can do an active design in a large way. And therefore, that rating is also, and therefore, as a result of all these three rating systems, I am very happy and proud to say today we have uh, of the order of uh, uh, nearly 2.2 billion square feet, or 220 crore square feet of residential green print for 17 lakh homes. Please keep the figure 17 lakh homes, apartments, uh, and, uh, uh, and flats are covered by the IGBC. Residential rating system alone. I just thought you should, you may like to keep that information. Now. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a, that's a great number, sir. And you know, today extensive, you know, wisdom sharing has been done by you, sir. You know, all the viewers are like enlightened with respect to the green building rating system and you know the current yeah. scenario in India. A lot of important information regarding your own rating system, that is IGBC, has been given by you, and you know the whole conversation about how incentives are given and so many other important areas yeah. have been covered by you today and thank you know i'm you. I really really thank you you know i'm really really glad that you came today I and want one message to go away at the end before closing yes please and that's going to be the whole new initiative the net zero and that's an area on which we are working very very hard while right. we are happy with the 29th rating which is added recently which covers up to net zero uh i told you the at the net zero um what the net zero series is going to the latest one coming. Right. So we did the net zero energy rating coming first. Then the net zero water came last year, which was uh, launched during the Green Building Congress by the Honorable Vice President uh, right. last year. And then very uh, soon, only we had a meeting two days back on the net zero waste coming. And then right. that'll be followed the culmination of all this net zero carbon. So all right. these four rating of net zero energy, water, waste, and carbon will bring together a new approach towards all the resource utilization largely. And that's exactly what the decarbonizing agenda towards 2050. You will have to see the phenomenal amount of legislative and uh, you know, what kind of orders coming from all over Europe and the US in towards the net zero component and wellness component. And that is going to be an area we are also working very much closely. So if IGBC green building, and green built environment. We are the one who moved from green buildings to green built environment are the things of the first 10 years, next 10 years, the next 10 years going to come from 2021 to 2030, we'll have a major thrust on the net zero and a net zero series component built environment on energy, water, waste, and carbon. And we'll work, we'll work towards the decarbonizing agenda in a very large way. And we are working on it. And we would like to see all the users how well you will be able to make use of that, either in respect of the office space that you have or the travel path that you take or using various aspects where the net uh, uh, zero carbon will come in a large way. It will affect in various aspects of our life Absolutely. over there. And, uh, and that is where the question back again, why CIA? And that's where those industry deals with those particular segments. The building right. fellow will not deal with the transportation segment on that. You know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Automobile sector. Yeah. So all those things Domain expertise, yes. Will, yeah. That's why working on that, and we are all working towards that. And I'm, I'm sure uh, all the your viewers uh, would be happy to know about the wonderful initiatives being taken under the Indian Green Building and other rating agencies. I'm equally happy with the great work 
being done by other rating agencies, not only within our country, even abroad. We, we take inspirations from good initiatives coming in some other part of the world, different parts of the 70 uh, rating agents are there. We keep on exchanging notes on who is doing better. Therefore, see that one is taken in a large way, etc. Into and I'm very happy that large number of the cities yesterday awards being given over for cities, green city awards why for smart cities and all that. They also the those cities where the environmental agenda and the green uh, uh, built environment agenda is taken forward in a very large way. So look forward to. Yeah, all support. thank you. Any Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I was really, really glad to have you. And all the viewers would have gained insights, great insights into the green building rating system in India. And, you know, it was really, really, I was personally very happy to listen to you speak. And, you know, you have been really great accepting our invitation to speak. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raj. It's a pleasure. I hope yeah. you all enjoyed as much as I enjoyed yeah. part of this particular thing. It's a freewheeling conversation, right. extempo, uh, coming from the heart on what exactly is happening on this journey yes. on the sustainable green built environment agenda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.